What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, and I told you guys we're having a big week here on the show, the Texas Southern Week, man. You guys know how I feel about the offensive line. No respect given by the media, but here we respect the offensive linemen, and we got another Texas Southern standout offensive lineman, Jack Nance, going to be one of the top offensive linemen in the SWAC coming into 2022, protecting one of the fastest rising quarterbacks in the SWAC and Andrew Body. But, man, Jack, appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, yeah, I appreciate you having me. Hey, right. man, for sure. Let's go back to your recruiting process, man. Coming out of Houston, Texas, one of the toughest high school circuits in the country for you, what was your recruiting process like? Who was recruiting you the hardest? And just looking back, what was that whole process? You know, what was the journey like for you? So I think my recruiting process might have been a little – I don't want to say unorthodox, but I played mostly defense my sophomore year of high school on varsity, uh, flipped over, played some O-line, and then my junior year I went back over to uh, defensive line, played really the entire season, D-line, you know, all district type stuff, whatever. I was playing really anywhere from the nose to five, even standing up a little bit. I was a little lighter. Um and then my senior year, we graduated at least two, three, you know, college-ready offensive linemen. So kind of had a spot we needed to fill. So I hopped over and played tackle my senior year. Um, so with recruiting, it was kind of funny because I had – it was pretty split. Some schools wanted me on offensive line. Some wanted me defensive line. So um, I'd say the process was a little slower than I would have liked. I definitely had a lot of opportunities from JUCO level. Uh, a lot of schools asked me if I want to prefer walk-on, uh, D2s, D3s, all that. Uh, I was kind of holding out on that D1. And uh, a lot of schools, you know, really the Southland Conference, almost every school in the conference recruited me heavy. Um, and it kind of just felt like I needed one domino to fall, and they probably all would have, but – First domino that fell was Texas Southern. It was pretty close to signing day. So uh, once they signed me, it was up from there. I mean, I was locked in. I was just ready to have the whole process over with and find a home and get locked in and ready to go. Hey, man, I, I love it. The fact that you were just like, listen, I don't care if you put me at safety, linebacker, DN, offensive line, just put me on the field. I'm going to go make plays, man. I, I commend you for that. But, you know, every player from Texas, man, I got to ask this question because you guys are very vocal about how competitive the high school level is in the state of Texas. I mean, even at the lower levels up to 8A football for you, do you feel like playing that Texas high school football circuit prepared you for college football more so than playing elsewhere? No question. There's nowhere else in the country you can play and get a better high school football experience. And, I mean, I would say Texas got the most talent, you know, my opinion. But that's an argument. You can say Florida, Georgia, California, whatever, you know. But uh, when it just comes down to public schools and the level of talent at all these different public schools, there's no question Texas is the strongest uh, – I mean, there's no other, nothing like it from the fans, the atmosphere, all that. Nothing like Texas high school football. I'm really glad you made the distinction between private and public schools, too. I don't think a lot of people talk about that. Out in California, even in Florida, a lot of those big schools are private, can offer scholarships. Really, Georgia and Texas are the only two states that their top teams are usually public schools. Yeah. So I'm really glad you, you, you specified that. But you already kind of talked about what led you to commit to Texas Southern. You know, looking looking at to this year, man, you guys are have been talked about as one of the dark horses for the swag, man. Especially after last year, you guys made some waves. For you, you guys just wrapped up spring practices. Uh, let's talk about your offensive line unit first, man. How do you how do you, what were your takeaways from the new O line unit that you guys have coming up going, you know, leaving spring practice going into 2022? Yeah, so um I'd say it was a lot of growth. You know, we kind of had a cornerstone, my boy Nate Hines. Uh we had all came in, me. My boy T Rob, uh, Marquis, and Nino, we all came in together. So, all, uh, I guess all four of us count me. You know, we had all kind of been a backbone along with Drake and Aiden, uh, two tackles. So, really, like that room, it kind of stayed consistent with, I guess, us seven guys. And, you know, we added Maddie, we added some other guys throughout the years, but that was uh, kind of the core unit. So, 
Nino was the first one to uh, leave that. So, and he's a big personality, big presence. So uh, it took a little, you know, definitely have some personalities, but just building that dynamic of having that big of a personality leave. And he was the senior and all that. And kind of, you know, I'm playing center now. I play guard in the past. Uh, I've also played center though, and have a lot of the, I have an understanding of the center position, but me stepping into that role and just kind of uh, seeing how it all sorted out, I think uh, I think we made big strides in the spring. I think we're in a better spot than we've been in since I've been here. So, And, you know, on the flip side coming out of spring practice, you guys had, I believe it was 56 freshmen last year. You guys were the youngest team in FBS level and FCS level in the entire country. You know, for you, being an older guy, being in the program for a lot longer than a lot of these other guys, being in that leader role, how have you seen the growth of just the overall team? Because a lot of people don't realize you don't keep that many kids together that long, especially nowadays with the transfer portal. You guys all kept almost everybody from that class. So for you, how have you seen the team matured from that team of 56 freshmen to now all of you guys have had one to two years in the program and now you guys are primed to make some waves? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of those freshmen have made big strides, you know, and I'll say the offensive line room is probably the most experienced unit on the entire team. So we kind of have that continuity and I would like for it to be where we can be leaned on, you know, uh, put the ball behind us. You know, we're a little younger at different spots, which isn't an issue. I mean, we got the best quarterback in the conference, so it's not a complaint, but I'm talking about, um, You know, we're younger at receiver. It was Body's first year through it. So I think this spring, there was just a lot of growth, a lot of guys kind of stepping up. It was their first spring. Believe it or not, it was – I've been here since 2019. This was my first regular spring because we started – we had a week of spring. My freshman year, COVID hit off for however long, you know, and then did a little spring season last year. So first regular spring, you know, get a spring game, kind of build excitement competition all that so I think that was um I think it was important I think it was big for the freshmen but really big for everybody for sure hey man I, I'll agree with you on that I got the Andrew Body hoodie on right now for, for the interview mess I'll definitely agree with that and you guys took a big step forward I know Drake first team All-American a lot of you guys I've heard potentially could even be preseason All-Americans people really are overlooking Texas Southern and that Gets me to my next question, man. You know, there's only a few guys out here who have been talking about you guys as dark horse, but there's a lot of people that are just going to say, nah, man, it's going to be a Southern or an Alcorn, one of the blue blood programs in the SWAC West. For you, what is your message to all those fans and media sleeping on you guys going into 2022? You know, I might have a different take than most people because a lot of people would, I'd say, take it personally. To me, I mean, I feel like I've always kind of been slept on. I came in, you know, kind of undersized old lineman. I was late to sign, you know, recruiting process, like wasn't heavily recruited. Um, I don't mind not being looked at as the golden child or, oh, they're going to be the one, you know. If y'all support us, great. But if not, it's all about just showing them. I think my uh, I really love this team and the energy of this team because – might sound funny, but it feels like not a reflection of me, not like I'm like leading the team, but just uh, my whole mindset on just, you know, being the underdog and working, you know, not not afraid to get your hands dirty. I think um, I think really fits kind of my identity and I don't mind, you know, I almost like being the underdog and making some noise, making some people mad, you know, so (laughs) you can get on now or you can find out about us. But hey. I, I, I love it, man. I love the attitude of everybody I've had on the show from Texas Southern, man. And just looking at you, man, because we know what the team goals ultimately are is to win the swag, get to the celebration bowl and take home that big trophy at the end of the day. But for you going going into this season, what are your personal goals for the 2022 season? I mean, I want to say the right answer is um, put my team in the best position to win every game we can possibly win, you know. I'm an old lineman. We don't get a ton of recognition. It's not many awards or whatever, obviously. I mean, the goal is be first team all swag, no question. Drake got it last year. I'm planning on being on there with him this year, you know. Um, 
So that's a personal goal, but at the same time, don't mind being slept on. Uh, the goal is to win, prove people wrong, you know. So whether, you know, they want to go with the flashier names, bigger names, transfers, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. If I can give Texas Southern the best chance to get a ring, get to Atlanta, all that, that's all that mattered to me at the end of the day. So, uh, hey, yeah. I, I love it, man. Uh, that was the most O lineman answer of all time, by the <laughs> way, too. I that that I loved it. And for you, I know the senior answer, man. You're one of the you're one of the most senior people on this team. Is PV Week One is the most important game, and every game after that, you know, thereafter. For but for you though, man, is there a game that you know you have circled as just a game you're looking forward to playing in just a little bit more? Yeah, this is an answer you probably wouldn't get from any Texas Southern guys, but um. Alabama and them, they uh, they did me bad in the recruiting process, and I'll just leave it at that. I mean, told me I had an offer, a coach left, whatever, whatever. That was supposed to be my first offer, so um, that will always, always, always be a personal one. Um, but every game, I mean, I look at every game personally. Texas Southern is the only school in the SWAC that offered me, so like, to me, it's all it's all personal. Um, obviously, there's Bigger names, more hype around Jackson, you know, Southern. It's a neutral site game, all that. So there's some excitement to that one. But uh, at the end of the day, it's whatever game's next. But there's certain ones where, you know, it's Sunday. After you play that game on Saturday, Sunday, I'm ready. Like, <laughs> week, I'm ready. We put up 49 points on them last year. Like, Yeah. I, that that was that was for me one of the more underrated games of the year last year. I mean that game was ridiculous, man. From the from from the from the kickoff all the way down to the end, man. And I know you guys go to Huntsville this year, I believe too, which will be a a huge game up there. And you mentioned the Southern game, man. That they're, they're going to be motivated too. You guys knocked them off. That was really y'all statement game last year, but. Behind the scenes, man, the rebuild of Texas Southern, the influx of talent all starts with one man, and that's head coach Clarence McKinney. For you, what is he like behind the scenes? What's his relationship like with the players, and what makes him the guy to lead Texas Southern to the top of the swag? You know, that's such a hard question because he's like a – I don't want to say mysterious. He's just a <laughs> – lane. you know, he's watching everything, and he'll joke with you, mess with you, whatever, but – uh just a real respectable guy, you know, uh, doesn't say a whole lot. So, you know, I feel like if you got to say too much, you probably don't know what you're talking about. He's the type of guy where he might say 10 words at the end of practice, but that sets the tone, you know what I'm saying? So just like type of guy who has a lot of knowledge for it and everything he says, you want to absorb. I mean, my goal is to coach in the future. Um, and I just think there's a lot you can learn from someone who doesn't feel like they need to stand up in front of the team and give a whole spill after every single practice, but, you know, just calling it how it is and leaving it at a, leaving it at what it is, you know, not blowing hey, it. I, I like it, man. Like you said, short and sweet. And the other question is, have you talked to him about playing defense a little bit this year? So some special packages, man. You're riding down your college career, man. You're going to talk to heck, Coach McKinney about getting you in on some defensive possessions. <laughs> I don't think Coach McKinney would think that's very funny. Um, <laughs> definitely with some of the d linemen about it, you know, whatever. Um, there was a week in the spring uh, when we played the little spring season, we were down some d linemen. And I was kind of the swing O lineman. I was kind of our sixth guy. So uh, I actually flipped to D line for a week and uh, had a guy go down. And I scored out real well against PV in the spring and kind of set me on track. But I was almost thinking, like, hey, you know, I'm back there. But also, uh, I pride myself on that. You know, not many O linemen, I don't want to say not many O linemen are versatile, you know, but it's like you can play guard or you can play tackle. You can play center guard or tackle, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I could, and I mean, I'm not trying to sound too cocky, but I just think uh, I bring stuff to the table where I could play multiple positions and help the team in a lot of ways. And, you know, there's been points since my freshman year where I've been out, in and out of the lineup, but I've always been one of the more athletic o line one of the stronger guys. So I just feel like getting your 11 guys who can uh, help you on the field is important, I think some way, shape, or form, 
I can find myself a role on the team regardless. Hey, I, I, I like it, man. I like the confidence. We all definitely got to have that. But NFL comparisons, man, people love player comps. For you, looking at your own game, which NFL player do you feel like you model your game after the most? Kind of piggybacking off that last thing I said, I feel like I'm a, I have a somewhat unique skill set. I mean, I'm undersized, so there's some negatives that come with that, but also I can move better than most guys. I'm a weight room guy, so uh, – can kind of make up for that in strength. I'll definitely say Jason Kelsey is an undersized center, and he played tight end. I want to say he even played quarterback, so, you know, he's a athletic guy. Uh, shoot, the two first two centers drafted this year, I believe, the Linderbaum guy from Iowa and uh, Jurgens from Nebraska, both freak athletes. So uh, yep. I just think I'm more cut from that mold for sure, an athletic guy, uh so, yeah, I mean, those are probably the three guys that come to mind. But I don't model myself after anybody. I watch stuff. I'm definitely a student of the game. But I don't have a certain player where it's like, oh, I'm trying to be Jason Kelsey. I'm just trying to be right. myself. Hey, I, I like it, man. And, you know, I played O-line when I was playing. I, I know if you haven't played O-line chemistry, I don't think people really understand that that means more than – than height, weight, stars on the O-line, everything for you. Just kind of talk about how important chemistry is along the offensive line during the season. Oh, there's no more important important thing to an offense. I mean, not just to an O-line. If your offensive line can see through one set of eyes and be connected, you know, we're a spread team. We don't have a tight end. So it's five of us, you know. So if you're five guys – can be locked in and on the same page, see things the same way. You see a backer widen and everybody knows what that means. You know, safety's rolled over. If you can have that level of chemistry and understanding of each other and knowing, okay, he does this real well or he doesn't. Sometimes he overshoots here, so let me be right there. I mean, I think you can have five SEC transfers that, you know, don't know a thing about each other that's going to be a bad offensive line. You know, yep. in our case, we have guys who have uh, been in a room with each other for a long time and we have a strong bond there and we've added guys along the way, but the foundation's laid. So guys are able to just, uh, I feel like gel in almost off the bat. I mean, we started summer this week. We've got probably seven, maybe even a couple more than seven new offensive linemen out there with us. So we're building that with them, but, you know, like we have an understanding of each other, the guys who have been there, and it's just getting these guys to kind of fit into that and understand it. So, uh, yeah, chemistry, there's nothing nothing more important than that across an offensive line. Hey, I, I like to get the I like to get offensive linemen on the show to speak about that because it's so hard to explain to someone who hasn't played <laughs> offensive line before because, <laughs> yeah, I, I love it, but – for yeah. you, you've mentioned you played, you can play center, you can play guard, you can play, you can play all across the O line. Where do you feel most comfortable? Is it the center spot, or are you just got, or is there another position that kind of sticks out to you? You know, so going back to it, like center, I didn't play center until I got to college, so it took some getting used to for sure. Um, I was probably always more comfortable on the right side, so I actually, and I'm six two, so. I don't think I play much tackle, but I think I'm comfortable at right tackle. I'm definitely comfortable at either guard at either guard spot, but uh, probably more comfortable at right. But at this point, I wouldn't even just say like stance wise and movement wise and all that center. But uh, I like to see things, and I mean, I'd say like I'm pretty good at being able to ID stuff, evaluate things, and all that. So I like. I sound like a control freak, but I like the control of playing the center position and just being able to kind of declare things and really be a student of it, seeing how defenses flow and whether they're just walking guys off the edge to scare us or if they're really going to come. So understanding all that stuff, uh, definitely love the center position because you can see it like chess, you know. Hey, it's the quarterback. It's the quarterback of the offensive line, man. You got it. If your center's not good. It's going to be a long day. I, I promise you that. And we both know how chippy it gets in the trenches, man. When you got the same guy for 70 to 80 snaps a game, man, it, it's bound. You're going to get tired of that person for you. How big of a trash talker are you during the game? 
Mel was a big trash talker in high school. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that's kind of – and that's when I was playing defense too, even more so. But, uh, you know, college kind of – it's a lot more mental, you know. So almost less time to trash talk so I can either call the guy across from me this, this, and that, or I can talk to the guard beside me and say, hey, we're definitely here, you know. So uh, definitely, like, if someone says something to me, it's up there. But uh, kind of, yeah, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that's fair enough, and that's fair enough. But looking at your career at Texas Southern, man, who are some of the best defensive players you've ever had to go up against? And there's been some good ones. I think – I'm pretty hard on myself in a way to where, like, I get beat and I'm not thinking, like, damn, that guy's good. I'm like, oh, man, I need to do this, this, or that, you know. But I'll say uh, my freshman year, we went and played at Valley, and they had that, what, Jerry, Jerry Gardner? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was good for sure. Um, you know, he was a pretty athletic guy. They kind of moved him inside and outside, so he was good. Uh who else? I mean, there's some there's some guys who think are solid for sure. But like I said, I mean, I think I'm tougher on myself than I am. Oh, that guy, you know, that guy's too good. It's like that. Oh, yeah. You got that, you know. Hey, I, I like it. You said, man, listen, it don't matter what accolades he has. I know my job and I know what, what to do. I, I like the mindset. But one-on-one, man, you – Versus a defensive lineman, what is the number one mistake that D lineman can make against you? Stopping on a play, honestly. Like, I'm type guy that to an undersized offensive lineman, you know, kind of got to get it on your own sometimes. So I might get a little wild with my hands. I might lunge. I might do whatever. But I'm going to play through the whistle every snap. So if he thinks, oh, it's outside zone to the right, I'm kind of out of this play. I'm still running my feet. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to put a guy through the ground every play. So uh, definitely just not respecting my motor, you know? Yeah. Hey, I like it, man. And going back to your career, what was your welcome to college moment, man? That where you were just on the field and you were just like, yeah, this is different. First day of fall camp, my freshman year. No question. I'm talking about it was a rain delay. So we started practice, got sent in, you know, and this after. So you say you play football. So you know how that fall camp schedule is. I mean, I'm talking all day. Yeah. (laughs) Acclimated to it. Uh, Really second practice of the day. It's late at night. Got back on the field. It's wet. And I'm playing center for the first time in my life. So, like, they recruited me to play center. I did all the snapping I could do with no pads on leading up to that. You put – I ain't never put knee braces on in my life. You put them knee braces on, shoulder pads on, pants on, helmet on, and it felt like I ain't never snapped a football before. So it was <laughs> right, left, over his head, all that. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, – I mean, I still joke about it with my friends, but coaches didn't think it was funny. So it was uh, – that was definitely like, man. This is real. Like I gotta, I gotta get on this. So, uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> but I, I absolutely love it. And the final question, man. I had someone that knew you were coming on the show and that texted me this question. They were like, "Man, I need you to ask Jack this question for you." You guys had a QB change this year, midway through the year. As the center, it probably affected you more so than anyone, especially height difference, style wise. For you, how big uh, was the QB change for you this year, and how did you adjust to it? So this was actually kind of a – I almost want to say a blessing in disguise for me. Uh, I got COVID the day before fall camp started this year, and it had me, like, down and out. I was sick, like, high fever, probably borderline going to the hospital. And so, you know, coming back, they wanted me to do all the heart tests, this, this, and that. So, I mean – I was out for a while, so I came back working with the twos. Body was the second string quarterback. So uh I'm talking about like, you know, you're kind of getting a read on things, but it's like, oh yeah, like he's got some for sure, you know, just off talking to him after the plays and stuff. It's like, oh yeah, like this kid wants to be out there and you just knew like it's a matter of time. No disrespect to the last guy, because 
he could go too. But yeah, I was uh, out there with Body. I was like, okay, like I didn't mind going with the twos because I'm snapping the ball to a guy back here. It's not just no ordinary second string quarterback. So uh, we kind of started playing around the same time. You know, I got back in the starting lineup probably a game or so after him. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> hey, that worked out perfectly, man. Yeah. I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds of that? But man, I, this was great, man. I loved every second of this, man. But it's all about promoting the players, man, and getting your guys' names out there and helping you guys increase y'all's brand. So let the people know where they can find you on social media, contact you for NIL deals, any messages, shout outs, anything you want to say. This time is yours, man. So first off, get out of the way. My uh, Twitter is Jack with the capital J, Nance with the capital N, 95. And then my Instagram is Jack underscore Nance, 65. So uh, now I'm not the most active guy, but definitely keep up with it. If anybody hits me about anything, I'm always glad to talk and all that. But uh, yeah, definitely got a lot of shout outs. I could probably keep you on the phone for another 20 minutes. I mean, <laughs> It go back to my high school coaches, high school teammates, obviously my offensive line room, Craig Hall. I appreciate him and everything he's doing for us, getting us, you know, laced up with you guys, uh, family and all that. So a lot of shout outs, but not going to waste your time with all that. <laughs> Hey, no, man, you are good. You are good, man. This 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 is your time for sure. But, man, Jack, this this was amazing. I, I know a lot of people are going to be excited to see what you and Texas Southern have coming this upcoming season. So, guys, make sure to go follow Jack on all social medias. Make sure to stay up to date with all things Texas Southern football throughout the summer and this upcoming fall season. And, guys, for Jack, myself, and the Blue Bloods, we are out for right now. <laughs>